Welcome everyone to this week's episode of Unrooted Men's Soccer Edition and I'm joined by none other than the head coach of Menlo College Men's Soccer for the first episode here in 2018, Keith Lambert. Keith, thanks so much for joining me on the show. Thanks for having me, Brian. You're very welcome. Let's start by talking a little bit about you. Now, I learned this over the summer and I forgot what song we were listening to exactly, but you have a white taste of music that includes even some older stuff from well before my time and probably even before your time. Where did this come from? Yeah, so I don't remember the song either, but I remember the conversation. And it just basically goes back to my parents. Um, obviously, when we were in the car, there was no such thing as satellite radio mm -hmm. or, you know, I think cassette tapes at that time. But we would just listen to old radio stations because that's what my parents listened to. So, it, you know, from basically kindergarten to probably fifth grade, it was all like Motown, 60s, 50s type yeah. stuff. Um, and then when I elevated my music, um, on my way to high school, I started listening to like classic rock. And so not until like my junior year in high school did I know what like modern music was, so to speak. I had, you know, I knew some songs and heard some songs, mm -hmm. but, um, I love the old stuff. It's good. Puts me in a good mood. Reminds me of my parents. So I like it. I think I described it as sounding like something you would hear on a on an episode of Scooby Doo. Yeah, I don't remember what it was, but it was something along those lines, yeah. and it just kind of took me back to the show. I was like, hey, you know what? This is something that I expect to see on a 1960s cartoon. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, and now, of course, being the co head coach of the men's soccer team, you get to listen to even more modern music. And I was over at your house the other day, and there was some. It seemed like nonstop reggae music or, or yeah. island vibe going on. Yeah, so that was. Uh, I would say reggae is my fallback now. It just always puts me in a good mood. Um, kind of goes with every moment. So the music thing is always tricky. We just actually uh, created a playlist for the players. So the coaching staff decided to take control of the locker room music. Okay. Um, because there's a lot of things going on in the music selection. And <laughs> we're just like, okay, we got to take control of this. But it's worked out well so far. We let the guys nominate music and we... You know, the coaches are a little bit older, so we threw in some old stuff, and they got some new stuff, so it's worked out well. As long as it's all unrooted appropriate? It is. Okay, it is. perfect. See, yep. then, then we pass all the tests right there. Yep. Now, people see you on campus quite a bit because you live in one of the houses right here uh, on the campus of Menlo College. What's it like always being a part of the Menlo community and always so close in proximity to everything and everyone? Yeah, it's awesome. I love it. I had the opportunity to move in on campus last year right before the season started, and it's been fantastic. It allows me to stay close to the guys, um, help out in the Menlo community, which I love, um, and just always be connected, which I think is important. We talk about that a lot in the recruiting process, that our student athletes are joining a, a family and mm -hmm. a community. Um, so I really like it. And then I'm able to detach as well. Like our house is situated in a good part of campus where you know, I can take off my Menlo shirt and just be with the family and yeah. feel like we're not on campus. So it's it's worked out really well. I feel really grateful and fortunate for the opportunity to live on campus. Now let's talk a little bit about the team now. The season is underway for the men, and I have to say, you guys look awfully impressive so far through your first three games. What are some of the early takeaways through the three opening wins to the season? Thanks. Um, yeah, it's been a good start for us. I would say takeaways are it helps having a lot of returners mm -hmm. um, from last spring specifically. So we graduated four guys. Um, two of those four guys were starters for us last year. Um, we brought Luis Nunez back into the lineup, um, who hasn't played a ton yet up until this point. But we've just we worked a lot on our culture. We worked a lot on defending last spring, and that was the tone and the tempo for the preseason. So. My hat's off to the guys for buying in to what we're doing. Um, we've been fortunate in terms of our results, um, and it's, I think, a product of their hard work. We really enjoy watching them play. Hey, you brought up Luis Nunez, and I think that was really impressive for me. The first two games of the year, you were without Luis Nunez, who was away for some family reasons, and you still were able to put up eight goals in the first two games, showing how deep the offense is. So bringing him back into the fold here in 2018, what does that add to the offense? Yeah, just more depth. Um, Eric started out really well. Eric Hegman has started out really well. A newcomer, um, Giovanni Gomez, has been really instrumental in our attack so far. And Wecho just gives us another option in the midfield as well as um, the ability to put him up top. So I think 
he'll continue to find his rhythm um, as the season goes on and as he gets more comfortable playing with the guys that have joined the team. So I'm excited to see how it goes. Yeah, a returner with 11 goals in one season to his name already, yeah. joining a guy who already had 11 goals a season before, yeah. joining Evan Snodgrass, joining Giovanni Gomez, and then joining Noah Kerr. And I've noticed that you guys have been utilizing Noah a little bit differently here in 2018, getting him involved offensively, and he scored his first collegiate goal. So what are some of the different ways that he's being used here this season? Yeah, Noah's been great so far. Um, you know, when I took over the men's program, Noah was an outside back for the team. And last spring we were talking and he told me like, well, in high school and in club, I was a midfielder. And so we started to look at him higher up the field. Um, and it just became apparent that he's much more suited for an attacking role mm -hmm. than he is a defending role. Um, and he definitely does a great job when he gets put on the back line. But he's an attack-minded player, really technical. It's exciting to see some of the things that he has to offer. He's learning how to play that outside mid role, um, kind of some of the defensive responsibilities, but the attacking qualities are really natural for him. Um, you know, and he, I think the other day against UC Merced, he assisted both of Eric's mm -hmm. goals. So he's getting on the stat sheet and he's helping us in the buildup. He's helping us in the final third. So I've enjoyed seeing Noah higher up the field. Yeah, already more than his first two seasons combined. He's got a goal and he's got three assists in just three games played so yeah. far. So he's off to a great start. One of the highlights of the 2018 schedule is the East Coast trip you guys have coming up in the middle of September. You're going to Tennessee and Kentucky to take on 20th ranked Cumberland University and 9th ranked Lindsey Wilson College. What went into scheduling this trip and what are you expecting to get out of it knowing you're facing two of the top teams in the country? Yeah, um... We're extremely excited for the trip. Um, our athletic director put it to us and said, hey, you need to get you know, to other parts of the country and, and shake, up, shake things up a little bit, you know, show them that the West Coast has got some good teams. Um, some might say there's a little bit of a Midwest and East Coast bias within the NAI and the rankings. Um, so that was like the initial thought and then we started reaching out to a couple schools and Lindsey Wilson, who's one of the most storied NAI men's programs in the country. They've won nine national championships. For every sport, too. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. And NAI, a powerhouse, uh, to say the least. Um, they were open, and then we tried to find another school around them. So Cumberland was available there in the same conference. Um, and I think they were one and two last year. Mm -hmm. um, so it'll be good to get out there. Um, a good life experience for the, for the players. Um, a good playing experience for the players and the coaching staff. And to just get out there and see another part of the country and play some other teams will be a lot of fun. Absolutely. It'll be fun to follow here from California where yeah. hopefully the weather is uh, not too bad over there on the yeah. East Coast. Don't Hoping want it to be for... too humid for you guys. Exactly. That's yeah. the trick there. It's tough to replicate, replicate that humidity here yeah. on the West Coast. We'll stay with the 72 degrees and yeah. overcast, which we saw the first yeah. couple of games of the season. That's nice. All right, Keith, let's get into the final segment of the show. It's called Brownie Bites. I'm going to ask you three off-the-wall questions. Give me your best answers. Got it. Question number one, which athlete of yours is the biggest Scooby-Doo fan? Ooh. Uh, best guess would probably be Noah Eine. He's okay. just kind of like a laid-back, quirky kind of guy who I could see him watching some episodes of Scooby-Doo and thinking it's fun and enjoyable. He, so, he resembles Shaggy in a way, too. That was part of the question. <laughs> yeah, that was part of the thought process, too. I, Maybe I not the it. shaggy hair, because he's got curly hair. Yeah. But, um, yeah. He could, he could definitely play a bit. I bet he could pull it off, too. Halloween costume idea, perhaps. There you go. Heine, do it. Make it happen. Question number two. Which athlete of yours is most likely to accidentally pop a kiddie pool? Axel Helmers. <laughs> kind, very, very kind soul. Uh, very unassuming, but I think at some point he, he would, like, jump into a kiddie pool as much as you could or start wrestling yeah. around in it and coach i didn't know i'm yeah. sorry <laughs> i thought this thing was made out of yeah. like aluminum or something yeah. no it's inflatable air yeah. that's yeah. what it is and uh, then question number three which athlete of yours would most likely lead the pregame walkout with a leaf blower you're not an option for yeah this. i know <laughs> um alex avila are there are their starting center back at the moment. He's just like a, a no-nonsense kind of guy. Mm -hmm. And it might substitute like a, 
uh, an axe or a chainsaw mm -hmm. for a leaf blower because yeah. he's a little bit tougher. Yeah. So um, Alex would definitely be the guy who would lead out. So that. the the backstory behind the question, I just have to bring yes, this up. Please is do. Opening day against Northwest Christian, I see Keith Lambert leading the guys out to the field about an hour before, and he has a leaf blower in his hands, and I'm thinking to myself. What is this like the, the like the like the axe or a, or a chainsaw? Like what's he gonna do? Ying 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 ying! We're gonna blow away the competition. Yeah. But lo and behold, he was just gonna blow off the end lines that were covered in leaves. Yeah. We had there's a lot of leaves falling on the end line, so we yeah. want to just clear that space. Got to make it a, a good game day experience for the boys. Any chance the leaf blower returns? Definitely, definitely. The, if fall is coming. The leaves will continue to drop, so That's we got right. to keep that end line clear. That's right. Keith, thanks for joining me on the show. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. You're welcome, folks. The men's soccer team on the road with the women's soccer team this week, both of them heading up to Redding, California to take on Simpson University for a doubleheader. The men's team will begin play on Friday. That is a 1 o'clock start time. The women's team will follow with a start time at 3 o'clock. We invite you to tune in to next week's episode when Keith Lambert will select the first student athlete to be interviewed by me, Brian Brownfield, right here on Unrooted Men's Soccer Edition. Until then, we'll see you next week. Take care, everyone. Welcome to the show!